Is it time for my solo? Yes. I'm Madam Manis, and Peter Martin is out on the jazz cruise this week, so I am rolling solo here at the You'll Hear It podcast. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com for all your jazz lesson needs. Today, we're talking about a pianist that has become very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I am criminally late to the game with the great Errol Garner, but I find him endlessly fascinating and Errol Garner has made his way into a regular rotation of music that I listen to with pure joy and I think it's because of just the sheer force of swing that Errol Garner plays with he's got an incredibly sophisticated touch on the piano he sits super high you'll see here we're about to watch a video uh, in 1964 he sits incredibly high at the piano and to where his elbows are above the keyboard, uh, it looks kind of funky, but it works for him, especially with his style. And his style is what I really am the most interested in. I think having grown up in the era of music that I've grown up in, bebop is like this critical, crucial tool for all of us to learn how to play music. Uh, and Earl Garner doesn't have a ton of bebop in his playing. He was about the same age as Charlie Parker, but has an incredibly different approach to a lot of his quote unquote jazz contemporaries. And some people at the time didn't even consider him, you know, a jazz pianist. He's much more of a of a swing pianist and an entertainer, uh, it seems, than a lot of his contemporaries. But his music is still incredibly deep to me anyway. And I think it just goes to the to the show you the power of swing having like a sophisticated swing vocabulary with loads of uh of rhythmic vocabulary loads of melodic vocabulary his harmonic depth on the keyboard is kind of off the charts he's a, a one-man big band sometimes a one-man orchestra and it's a real joy it's really everything swings like crazy you can hear a lot of uh a lot of a Jamal ish kinds of things here with Errol Garner's playing. And like I said, it's just kind of a, a different paradigm than sort of the bebop first approach. Let's check out this live recording from 1964. This is Janine, I Dream of Lilac. And watch what happens at the beginning of this. Uh, the rhythm section, Eddie Calhoun on bass and Kelly Martin on drums. They don't know what's about to happen. And Errol's kind of teasing them at first, seeing if they can get it. This is all on, like, you know, being recorded. <laughs> high up he's sitting there look i mean the elbows are like six inches maybe above the keys at least six inches above the keys it's very very exaggerated <laughs> the rhythm section has no idea what's going on but with his style of right hand which is very chordal like i said like a big band like an orchestra I think being that high up provides, it must provide some kind of advantage because he's so fluid with it, as we'll hear. All of these trio recordings, by the way, filled with these great arrangements. Look at that left hand. Low baritone voicings. Filling up every beat, but very, very quietly. The melody is in the soprano range. It is not an alto melody that is high. And 
it's just like a style of left hand comping you just don't see that often from modern players, but it sounds great. Uh, playing the guitarist role in a big band. And his language in the right hand. Very swing oriented. Uh. Now the big octaves come in. This is a signature of Errol Garner. These big chords, these big right hand octaves. Everything swings so hard. Ugh, so joyful. Ah. You can hear that Ahmad Jamal esque use of the range. Why not? Let's go up. Why not? Let's do it. So relaxed. Note that. A lot of us, when we're playing octaves, we tend to like go all out. Oscar Peterson, we're going big, big, big. He does it so much that it's so relaxed. Whew. Look at that. Uh. Singing. So swinging. Let's, why not? Let's go again. Come on. Oh, let's go back. Okay. Shout out to Eddie Calhoun on bass and Kelly Martin on drums. Friend of the show, Kelly Martin. How great is this? Caleb's going to put a link to this video. It's on YouTube. You can watch the full 35 minutes. There's also a, a bunch of hour-long concerts as well. Let's listen to one more track here after this. But he's dressed so hip in 1964. Woo. on the street where you live melodied with or uh, medleyed with I should say I could have danced all night it's all about these moments it's a that's why I'm saying it's like a very similar vibe to the Amajamal trio So good at creating these little moments with the arrangements. The solos don't feel like, and now it's my turn to blow. It feels like part of the song. I'm telling you, the older I get, just the more attractive the style of playing becomes. Woo. Once again, 
one thing to notice too is the variety of those right hand octaves. So he'll do straight octaves, he'll do chords, he'll be rolling it in one direction, he'll be rolling it you know, bottom up or top down, he'll be tremoloing it a lot. He has so many textures to that right hand thing that he does. And he's like, he's like a, he's like a, he's like a swordsman with that right hand octave. You know what I mean? He's like a, like a fencing champion. He's so light and quick with it. It's like, it attacks so easily and effortlessly. It's amazing. mind-blowing, right? Again, all in that sort of low tenor, high baritone range. Lower than you might think. Filling up the space, but ever so quietly. And then dropping those bombs. Good. On the front foot here. coming to the, back to the melody. There's melody. He's never like... You could listen to a whole Errol Garner record. He's never 10 seconds away from playing some version of the melody. like he'd be a fun hang too doesn't he it seems like he'd be a good time to hang out with that's Errol Garner uh if you don't know any Errol Garner check out Concert by the Sea that's like the big famous record it's a live recording it's trio it's amazing uh, but it's all worth checking out it's all very very good and you know again like there's no bebop in there to speak of even though he's a year younger or uh, roughly a year younger than Charlie Parker <laughs> you know like there's nothing, this, this, he's not in that vein. And yet, it still feels very compelling and familiar and, and artful and accessible and super fun and super, super swinging. So definitely worth your time if you haven't spent much time with it, uh, no matter what kind of musician you are. I think there's loads of lessons in there. All right, that's my episode, my solo episode. Again, go to openstudiojazz.com if you want to go on a deeper dive. We actually do listening sessions. We did Errol Garner a couple months ago. We did an Errol Garner LP. We listened to the whole thing. Uh, join our community and you can get in on those and all of our courses, classes, whatever it is. Uh, until next time, you'll hear it.